Well, the streaming wars have been in full swing for quite some time now, and HBO currently dominating the narrative with the debut of its Game of Thrones prequel, House of Dragon. The question now, could Warner Brothers Discovery take command as the go-to streaming service? For more on this, let's bring in Alex Webb, Bloomberg Quick Take correspondent. Alex, great to have you on the program uh, this morning. Again, everyone's buzzing about it. A lot of Game of Thrones fans maybe reluctantly going back into this journey again. How impactful do you think this is for Warner Brothers Discovery, which has had... Uh, let's just say a very busy last few months. There's certainly been some heavy pivots within this space. As we were in the middle of lockdowns, there was a lot of pressure on companies that maybe hadn't gone as hard and fast into streaming. They saw that investors saw the multiples of which Netflix was trading. It peaked at around 53 times its forward earnings. And Investors sort of said, well, maybe you other guys should be doing some of this as well. That's when we started to see HBO Max come out with gusto, Disney doubling down on Disney+. Plus. Since then, of course, we've seen the valuation of Netflix fall through the floor. And in fact, Netflix itself is pivoting. It's going into advertising and, and as it sees revenue uh, opportunities plateauing. So that is also something we're seeing at HBO, that actually Warner um, Brothers Discovery are tamping back on some of the ambitions that the old Warner Media Management had. And they're saying, well, we've canceled a few shows, a few films, in fact, that they were they were almost completely made and we're going to release on HBO um, Max, not give them a cinematic release. They've canceled that release completely now uh, in order to focus on a proper, it seems, uh, streaming bundle. CNN Plus was, of course, another victim of that strategy. So, Alex, let, let's just take um, House of Dragon as, as an example. I mean, certainly a lot of people saying, look, this was a huge premiere, but this is this was not something that was planned under David Zasloff, right? I mean, this is the, the, the impact coming from Game of Thrones, which is where HBO was. I mean, this this huge investment in these shows HBO Max and now under David Zasloff, I mean, the, the idea seems to be to, to not put that kind of money, or is it? I mean, what do you think this premiere says about where the strategy should be? So I think there's a massive difference between a show uh, like this compared to a film such as Batgirl, which is one of the uh, productions that they, they canceled. And the reason being that it is more conducive to promoting stickiness. If you have a show that it runs out over the course of several weeks or indeed months, and you're looking at the cost of production per hour, a show like this is you know, probably 10 to $15 million per hour of content. Um, if you look at Batgirl, which was presumably a sort of 90 minute film and had an $80 million budget and is a one off release, you're not keeping subscribers sticking around for more than it takes to see that particular film. And the, the cost per hour is significantly higher. So when you look at the ROI of a series like that compared to one off directed to streaming releases, um, you could make the case that it's a far better bet to bet to, to invest in a TV series. Uh, now, what about the actual uh, revenue stream in terms of traditional? Because one interesting thing is that at the end of the day, you still have a decent amount of people subscribing to cable. Now, obviously, with the mix of streaming services and the fact that everyone's got a strategy now, it's going to have mixed results. But it's interesting in your note, you said that NBC actually looks pretty smart and what Comcast is doing over there. W why? Well, the original strategy with Peacock, now I, I'm not saying for a second that they've smashed it out of the park with Peacock, they haven't. It, the, it's still like a $750 million business, and you compare that to Disney+, Plus, which is already you know in the region of $10 billion. But what they did from the get-go with Peacock was have an advertising-funded um, tier. That is now something that a lot of people are looking at, at in this inflationary environment. I think there had been... For quite a while, the expectation or um, assumption that particularly Netflix was essentially a utility, that everybody who was going to watch TV or watch streaming video would have Netflix and then build on top of that based on their other interests. So, you know, they get ESPN if they're interested in sports, they get Disney Plus if they're interested in kid shows. That has actually seen not to be the case. We've seen that churn, the number of people coming into and out of their Netflix subscription has increased because it is discretionary spending. People are looking at where they can cut expenses as their household budgets get tightened. And Netflix is one of the things they can cancel quite easily. It isn't a must have. So having an advertising funded tier where it's a lot cheaper at $5 a month, it's maybe easier to justify than would be $12 a month. And that's where Peacock came in first with that strategy. 
Uh, where does Amazon stand in all of this? You've got Amazon coming out with uh, Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. They're actually going to stream at least one or two of the episodes in theaters ahead of the release on Prime. Is that kind of the strategy that you think maybe other streamers may follow? And, and how, where do you think Amazon is positioned in all of this, just given that streaming is not the big money maker for them? So there are two pieces to this, that having a cinematic release just gives a little sheen of glamour to, to the production. And so that's something that HBO have said quite explicitly, that if you give it a cinematic release, or Warner, Warner Brothers, I should say, Warner Brothers Discovery have said quite explicitly, you give it a cinematic release, and then it appears on your streaming uh, service a few weeks later, then consumers might go, oh, well, this is a for cinematic film, and now I'm getting it on my streaming service. This streaming service is great. But to your point, the economics for Amazon are very different. There's data which shows that if you are a subscriber to Amazon Prime, of which, of course, Prime Video is a part, you are likely to spend twice as much in a given year on Amazon.com than you would if you're not a Prime subscriber. So this is a way of onboarding people into their um, subscription service, which will convince them to spend money elsewhere. Of course, they might make some money from the subscription itself, but that isn't really the end game. That's just a little <laughs> bit of bait to reel you in. All right, Bloomberg Quick Take correspondent Alex Webb, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it.